At 6.36 morning to you, should we have a look at some of the newspapers for you? The Sunday Telegraph has Sir Keir Starmer attacking Trump over his bad faith criticism of NATO. The Times says Kremlin spies have been accused of disconnecting prison CCTV before Alexei Navalny's death. The Observer says Ukraine is pleading for more arms as Russia seizes a frontline city. It's a, a key strategic point, actually. The Sun reveals that royal aides have stopped Prince Harry from travelling to Sandringham. Uh, they stopped him the, the other week when he came to visit his father and have ruled out any royal hybrid role. The Mail on Sunday says just stop oil's plan to sabotage elections um, by apparently this what they want to occupy MPs' homes. That, mm. can't, that can't be right. That oh, can't we be might, right. We, we might look into that. Joining us to go through what is making the news is social campaigner Winston Davis <laughs> and political consultant Emma Burnell. Very good morning. Good morning. morning. Good, morning. Both. good morning. Winston, what should we start with? Um, well, I think we've got Prince Harry been stopped from going to uh, Sandringham um, and he was told to go to Clarence House instead, so his, London, his dad's London um, mm. home, and he spent 30 minutes there. Yeah. What, what, what do you make of all that? Do you think that he should have been able to spend more time with his father? Is his, is his dad after all? Yeah, I mean, I, I think... Do you have sympathy for Prince Harry in this situation or do you think he's... I think the thing is with Prince you Harry... what you sow. He, he's, he's, it's, no matter what he does, he's going to do something wrong. Because if he stayed in America, he's got, there's a problem with staying in America and not coming to his dad. If he comes back to the UK, you know, has he got other ulterior motives for coming back? He's, mm. he's in a difficult position. At the end of the day, that's his dad. Mm. He wants to come and see him, wants to spend time with him. I think let the man be. Uh, well, I, I sort of agree on this issue. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, as you know, I'm not the biggest royal watcher in the world. As you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it shocks you, Stephen, doesn't Every it? Every <laughs> time. But, uh, yeah, when it comes down to what is essentially family business, mm. you just sort of think, God, leave them alone, let them get on with it. If my family were under that much scrutiny, we'd get it worse than them, I tell you, because yeah, they're, they're just a family having very normal family fallout, frankly, but they're doing it whilst also being the royal family, so everyone's yeah. scrutinising mm. every second of their lives. And you just nobody lives up to that. I do... Uh, I do think he's done some things which are pretty terrible. However, um, with this one, he's going to be criticised whatever he did. Yeah. Yeah. He is damned as if he does and damned if and he doesn't. And it does sound like, from what he said, we are going to see a bit more of him in the UK coming to visit his father. Well, I imagine, you know, if his, his father's not well, his father's not young, um, there is a, a relationship... Seemingly, I mean, we really know nothing about it, but seemingly to be rebuilt. Mm. And if both sides want to rebuild it, good on them. Mm. OK, Ebba, let's have the Sunday Telegraph this morning. Sir Keir Starmer, we're expecting, of course, this big speech in Glasgow today, uh, but also he's already over, overnight uh, attacked Donald Trump over his criticism of NATO. Well, I think it's an implied attack on Trump. Mm. Um, he's sort of saying that Britain will stand strongly behind its allies. And the Thinly though. Exactly. Um, yeah, the, the obvious... Um, Comparator is Donald Trump, who's very much saying that he won't stand behind his allies at all um, and that, you know, he doesn't really care uh, a jot about the NATO alliance and um, the, the particular Article 5 rule, which is uh, that any attack on any member of mm -hmm. NATO is an attack on all of NATO and all of NATO must stand behind it. Now, it is worth remembering there's only one country in the world that's ever invoked Article 5. Do you yeah. know which country that yeah, is? It's the United States of America. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and that was after 9-11. So um, there is only one country that's actually asked for this to, to be invoked. Yeah, but the, his argument, um, and Winston, I mean, do, does he have a point? Because um, his, his <laughs> argument is, well, America's paying all this money into NATO, mm. the UK pays as well, but a, lo a lot of countries actually aren't paying their fair whack. Like France, mm. like Germany. Yeah, I mean, this is a thing. I mean, Trump's a businessman. We like it or not, he's a businessman. Maybe he's not a great businessman. No, I was going to say, it's but, happened, in, but, it's happened but, in New York the last few days. But, but the reality of it is, he's, he's saying, you know, and it's, it's, it's life. If you've got, you've got to put in, if you want to get out for something, you've got to put in. Like, you know, as a small business owner, I've got to work hard to get the things that I want. And if countries want to be part of NATO, 
as long as they've got the, the capability of, um, of putting in, they should be putting in. If you talk about France, France in position to put in. Mm. I mean, I do and think that we have taken the RI off the ball in terms of European security, and we have over relied on the, fo the idea the Americans would always be there. Yeah. Um, that is, it's unfortunate timing because we're sort of, I mean, UK is, I think, paying the 2% uh, and is in fact having a negotiation as to whether we want to go further than 2% of GDP. And the problem with GDP, of course, is it goes up and down. Yeah. Um, and we are, we are, we do need to think more about European security because we are seeing a hot war mm. on the edge of Europe. Well, and that's yeah. partly why I think Sir Keir Starmer was meeting, yeah. uh, having these one-to-one -one meetings yesterday with world leaders in Germany. I I'm just in trying to imagine if he becomes prime minister, if Trump becomes president, <laughs> what's that meeting, that first oh, meeting God. between Keir Starmer and Donald Trump would be like? I think the one thing that Keir Starmer is very aware of is how much damage Blair's hugging close of George W. Bush did to him. Yeah, and I think so that, that Keir is very keen not to replicate that sort of closeness. That's not to say that they wouldn't work together as world leaders have to and do. But I think that... Um, over-invoking of the special relationship mm. that, that Blair did as a Labour leader that, that was quite unpopular within his party to somebody who was such a right-wing Republican at the time. Mm. I mean, now it it's, it's extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, that, this it? is the extraordinary thing. Um, yeah, things can only get worse, I suppose. Oh, yeah. um, Winston, what do you make of this in the Mail on Sunday this morning? With Just Stop Oil activists, it's claimed, are planning to occupy MPs' homes before the election. Well, they don't make it clear. They say they're going to occupy. I'm not sure what that means, actually, go in or just lay in. Camp outside. Siege. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what they go into the article and they talk about that they're going to try and interrupt speeches, conferences, and they say, I think they use the word, be a bit shouty. Um, <laughs> with the, you know, it's just stop oil. It's a case of... They've got their free right to um, protest and to make their, their voices known. It's just a case of how much does that interrupt our normal lives and how much of it is, is fair and... But it... also, outside MPs' homes... Mm. I mean, when you think harassment? last week what happened to Tobias mm. Elwood at mm. his home, when mm. I think his children were there, and um, pro-Palestinian supporters, dozens of them were protesting mm. outside. Yeah, I think listen, They say there was no violence, but it is a violation, is it not? Yeah, I think I think I think there's got to be something on people's homes. Like you come outside my house with my family there, and you're you're intimidating or making my my family or kids, you know, scared. No, nah, that's not right. Yeah, so it's the difference between protesting and harassing. But this yeah. is what I'm saying, the cross yeah. the line. Where, where, where are you going to cross that line? I know they say the, the cause is worthy and agree 100% we've got to look at climate change and whatnot. But again, it's like these lines and who draws the lines and the, like families out of bounds. Yeah, yeah I think the home is... It, uh, protesting at anyone's home mm. is wrong. Let's say that I um, decided that Winston wasn't a great plumber. Now, I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure he's a brilliant no, plumber. Excellent. <laughs> um, <laughs> but best. I... But, you know, I could go to his place of work or I, you know, and protest him there. But I think when you take it to the home, that's a different thing. But and we yeah. have a real Even MPs' yeah, yeah, offices. Yeah. Look at the Tory well, MP, it's Mike Freer recently. Well, OK, it? but I think there's a difference between demonstrating outside an MP's office, which is part of their place of work, mm. and firebombing it, which is, okay. you know, mm. a yeah. very, MPs very different and issue. Security. But I think MPs and security is a real issue. Look, I was um, friends with with Joe Cox, right. um, so this is something I feel very keenly. I know people who um, feel the same sense of personal connection to to other MPs, who've been, to David Amos, for example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do have to remember that MPs have been killed. Yeah. Um, and this is, you know, we are in a strongly anti-politics mood in this country. I get that, I understand it, but we have to be so conscious that that should stay political and not personal. Yeah, and, mm. and it's not just the MPs themselves, it's their families, Absolutely. their partners. But their I don't children. think it's okay for MPs either. I mean, no, MPs... no, but it's the ramifications <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah you've got absolutely. to be able to leave, even if you're an MP, even if you're a public figure, you've got to be able to leave your work. And we keep saying, we want MPs to be normal yeah. people. Well, you've got to then let them have normal lives and families and, and homes that they feel comfortable and secure in. Mm. Yeah. I think when you become an MP, you're not actually a, a normal, a normal person. You're, you, you, you step into a position whereby 
I think you probably need more security. You need closer looking at to, to keep you safe. Yeah. But I wish yeah. that weren't true, is this the problem? Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? I think that, <clears throat> that's gone by the by. Um, the Observer, Emma, um, you, the Ukraine is pleading for more arms. Well, there's nothing new in that in itself. But the argument is Russia's taken um, Avdivka, which is strategically quite important. Yeah. But it seems to be being claimed that, quite simply, uh, you, they've taken it because Ukraine ran out of munitions. Mm, yeah. That does seem to be the case. Um, I was listening to an interview with um, some people on the front line in Adivka and they were saying, yeah, we just don't have enough musician, uh, munitions to, to fight back in the way that we were doing. Um, and there's obviously been this huge delay with the package going through the US Congress. Mm. Do you think that could change it all in light of Alexei Navalny's death? Well, one would hope so, um, because Putin is quite clearly just <coughs> trolling now, essentially. Mm. Um, and he's trolling the West, and we just haven't taken him seriously enough. And I think that, you know, the Ukraine is the front line now for the West. Um, and that matters, and it matters to all of us. It's not a case of, oh, this is just money being poured into a foreign mm. country. It's actually, we live in an interconnected world. And if we want to continue living in the kind of West that we've become used to over the last sort of, you know, 70 odd years since the, the, the Second World War, then that does take investment and fight. But it mm. doesn't seem to matter to certain Republican politicians in the United States. Sadly, um, I mean, all politicians are firstly concerned with what happens at home. Mm. But I think that there is a misapprehension amongst those politicians that nothing matters except what happens at home. And actually, um, these things do have a knock-on effect and will have an effect on the United States. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what you... If you, if you heard, when we were talking to a political analyst, Steve Gill, in the States, when he was saying... We don't know, with, with this in a bigger context, you know, whether Navalny was killed by Putin. I don't think Putin really had anything to do with it. I mean, we're getting this... Um, the Sunday Times claiming today that um, FSB, which was the KGB, mm -hmm. um, agents were sort of at the prison a few days before. There's no CCTV had been disconnected. I mean, what do you make of it? It's a tough one, isn't it? Because I'll tell you why. Because I, I, I um, listened to an interview, was it a, a broadcast he put out yesterday, Putin, saying that he... Um, why would he do it? There was a logic in killing him a month before their, their elections. And actually, on the face of it, you're like, yeah, that, that seems all right. However, when you look at these people that are mysteriously just drop down dead around him, it's a little bit like... Mm. <sighs> but he I mean, could, people he could... fall out of windows. No, yeah, it's 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 not saying plutonium drops in the <clears throat> drink at a coffee shop. You're like, I'll get sugar in my, in my and coffee. The reason yeah. to do it a month before the election is to prove that he can. It might That's not even be a is... case of him poisoning him again. It could just be that they made life yes. so untenable for him... Yes. That his body, yeah, whether he was murdered anymore, or whether he was killed, he was poisoned with Novichok. Absolutely, yeah. He, he, whether he was murdered in that immediate moment or whether he was killed by long They've term sort of imposed abuse, a slow death essentially, sentence. yeah, they, Putin is directly responsible for that death. No, what do you do? You think that Winston? Yeah, I mean, look, you've put him in. I think I read it was minus twenty eight degrees in yeah. the Arctic Circle. I mean, that's below cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we've so, got that from a plumber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, if. <laughs> It, he's pushed him into the, the worst environment you could be in as a, as a human being. Um, but do you know what? Out of uh, Navalny's death, it might spring up. He might become like a martyr figure for yeah. other people that say, do you know what, actually, that man, he could have stayed is it in Germany when he was being treated yeah. before. He, they offered him protection there. He could have been stayed in exile. He could have been alive today. But he was like, no, do you know what? I'm going to go back and fight for what I believe in. Mm. And if you're willing to lay your life down for, mm. to fight for what you believe in, that can inspire others to do yeah. the same. It, well, the reaction it, yeah. to his death in Russia, yes. there's, there's mm. been dozens of arrests... Which, but yeah. people are, people are still going out on the street, him, which is so incredibly brave under that repressive regime. In terms of, of what this means for America and sending more arms to Ukraine, because obviously it increases the pressure, what do you think, um, Winston, as a... You know, just a... A, 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 normal, a, a normal, normal bloke. Normal guy. <laughs> which, is what, which is what we like. A normal guy. Would you, would you... I mean, do you continue to support the idea that we... 
that we're so, at a time when we're running out of money. This is, do this we need to keep funding this fight? I would love someone to break down the argument for me to say if we keep sending money uh, to Ukraine, this is going to help benefit us in this way, and we're going to the cost of living crisis is going to be helped out, and the poverty that we're living in. And I I support families um, all around my, my, my local area with different initiatives, and there are people there that literally can't feed themselves, can't clothe their children, mm. can't you know have furniture, and it's kind of like how are people and the ground level in this country going to be a support? you know, benefited by what we're doing in Ukraine. I well, not least no. their gas bills would come down if, um, if well, that war ended. They, they, well, we well saw, yeah. <laughs> saw British, gas, isn't it? British gas nearly made a billion pound of profit well, last right, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't get but, me started on war profiteering. But, but, the, but the, the, uh, the argument, I guess, would be not that doing it would make things better, but if we didn't do it, things would get worse. Mm. It's, it's a harder thing to say. The sell. only thing I want to say is that, again, a normal guy, right? Yeah. I was looking, in, looking into it and I was thinking, he's been in power 25 years. In 25 years, how many times has he come and invaded countries, you know, west of Russia? Yeah. And it's like, it, how much of a threat really is he to us, like, to our, our lives actually here directly? Yeah. As well, a normal if he takes Ukraine, yeah. we might discover yeah. quite a lot what, more. Exactly. Yeah, mm. exactly. And, and, and it still baffles me how it was only, was it five years ago, that Russia was hosting the World Cup. I know. And was almost being fated. And it was all, you know, and it was all very welcoming. And <sighs> David Cameron was We had was a lot of problems within... with it that we talked about, but they were largely around social issues. Now, those are important, don't get me wrong. You know, the, the Russian treatment of LGBT, LGBT people is appalling. But we also, we were not talking about the repression within Russia mm. of its own citizens. Mm. And that, you know, non-democratic countries like that, hosting something and being allowed to flaunt themselves on the world stage through something like the World Cup is really appalling. Yeah, but we had that argument with Russia and the, uh, with um, China and the Olympics. Beijing we did. In 2008. The argument is you open it up to the world stage and actually that influences the country. And how did that do for the Uyghurs? <sighs> <laughs> that was, but that's the argument. I mean, I understand the argument. It's the real politic argument. It's Henry the, Kissinger all over. Yeah, because the, the more you isolate... I mean, look at North Korea. The more you isolate, the, the, more, the more insular they become. Indeed, and, and North Korea, you know, is an incredibly repressive regime. It's also an incredibly poor regime because it's almost completely financially isolated. Um, there are... Real questions. None of this is easy. If there were simple solutions, we'd have found them. But I do feel like there is a difference between saying, should we completely isolate Russia politically or should we reward them with the World Cup? I don't think mm. those are the two extremes that we have to deal with. No, well, fair point. Winston, let's have a look at the Prince of Wales, should we? It's in the uh, Sunday Telegraph online. Um, he's, he's doing some work on social housing. Uh, apparently, yeah, he's spending um, three million pound of his own money to build 24, was it 24, 26? 24. Um, 24, yeah, um, social houses down in Cornwall. And now Cornwall has a big problem with homelessness and we know that this issue is, is very close to, to Prince William's heart. So this is a good Listen, I think it's great. I, you know what? It's, um, the guy's worth a billion pounds or whatever it is. It's a drop in the ocean to him. But do you know what? He's doing something. And I know there's going to be people that are going to be going, going for him even from doing this. But he's trying. You know, you, you talk about um, sometimes you talk, what people say is one thing, what they do is another. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. he's putting his money where his mouth is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I agree. I agree he's doing... He's doing what he can, and there's a lot to be said for that. Plus, you can always get the plumbing contract. I can't wait to get the plumbing contract. <laughs> yeah, six yeah. months in Cornwall, so... Yeah, that'd be all right, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, lovely. Good to see you both this morning. Thank you very much indeed. We'll see you uh, a little bit later on. Um, on uh, Sir Keir Starmer on NATO, Frank's been in touch. Morning, Frank. He says, uh, Starmer's attack on Trump about NATO is just a cover for the introduction of an EU army. He wants us back in the EU. Hmm. Wow. Well, I don't look. It's a, it's a, it's a point. Valid, I don't valid know whether it's point, true yeah. or not. And on Navalny, Jack, good morning. I don't think Putin is responsible for this. Instead, I think this is the start of Putin getting overthrown. Oh, well. well see about that. Yeah, I don't know. The experts wouldn't <laughs> agree with you, but you never know. You never know. Um, right, let's have a look at the weather with Craig.